More to the game, we're back with another episode coming to you today. Another beautiful Sunday as always. Today's podcast is one that I think you will all enjoy. This is a topic that hits home for me personally and a lot of my fellow athletes. And today's topic, why it's hard to date an athlete. This season is about misconceptions and people think that athletes probably don't have any trouble dating. They have plenty of options. They get all the girls or guys. Everything is rosy, sweet, and good to go. That's just not the case. Uh, it's not the case at all. For some people, obviously, they found the one. They have an amazing dating life. It ain't that sweet. The number one reason or the number one obstacle in the way of an athlete's dating life is the schedule and the priorities. This is a pretty obvious one. As an athlete, you got your practice schedule. You got your individuals, your weights, team practices, whatever type of events that go along with your club or team. A lot of things you got to do before you have any free time for yourself. And that makes dating a whole lot harder. You don't have as much time to get to another person. You don't have a whole lot of time to find another person. And if you do find that person, your schedules may conflict. You may be at practice or working out during their free time. Or they may be at work or doing whatever they got to do during your free time. So let me take it to the professional level. If you're playing overseas, um, you're away from home, away from them, maybe nine, 10 months. Long distance sucks, always has sucked, always will suck. Long distance makes things very hard. Being away from each other for so long can cause a lot, a lot of trouble. Hard to build a connection, hard to maintain a connection. It just makes things very difficult. But that's obvious. The schedules, priorities, you know, that's pretty obvious. I feel like everyone can see that as an obstacle in the way of someone that's trying to date an athlete or an athlete themselves trying to date someone. And in college and high school, you often see athletes dating other athletes just because their schedules can, you know, coexist a whole lot easier. They both understand they have things going on. Like, it's a whole lot easier to make that work when you both are athletes and you know what each other is going through. Now to the more controversial, more juicy, more opinionated reasons that I want to give. This is not just for athletes, this is for young people in general. We are living in a time where there is a false marketplace in terms of dating. People think they have a whole lot more options than they actually do. Oftentimes you will see a person that likes this person. This, let's call them their number one option, their star player. And the person that is their star player likes this other person as their number one option or their star player. And that person likes someone else as their number one option or their star player. And it just trickles down, trickles down, it's a domino effect. Everyone has this one person that they are seeking that probably isn't looking at them at the same way or value them the same way that they are valuing them. And it sort of seems like everyone is trying to date a little bit out of their league. And you just get a lot of frustration, a lot of people on games, a lot of people not treating people correctly and with respect. They'll be using them to kill time or to get validation or attention. And it's really sad and it's really toxic and disgusting, honestly. But we created this problem through social media and dating apps. People on social media with thousands and thousands of followers, verified badges, they think that they're at this level and they're trying to reach someone that is at this level as well or above that level. And that person trying to do the same thing and that's how the whole thing was created. Same thing with dating apps, dudes or girls that never would have had access to these certain people are getting access to them. Not necessarily mean they actually have a chance, but in their minds, they think that they are now at that level. A guy that's a six might end up talking to a girl on a social media or a dating app that's an eight. And he thinks that his options are now eights and nines or whatever. And the same thing goes for the girls and it just goes for everyone. Like people are getting access to people they wouldn't any otherwise have access to and they definitely probably wouldn't even you know pull up on these people in person anyone can slide in a dm anyone can swipe right on a dating app and you know someone might be swiping right back at you just for out of boredom or they want some attention or some kids in time like but that doesn't mean that's your real dating marketplace and that is a big reason why athletes might have trouble dating as well because 
they either think that they're at this certain level or someone that they're trying to get thinks they're at a certain level and they're not seeing eye to eye and actually meeting people on their level. But people should definitely not settle in terms of dating and it's not just about how people look or their status or whatever. Like find people that treat you right, find people that are good people and you know, go for that. Don't settle for anything less than what you deserve. All that toxicity and the messed up dating marketplace we got has led to people with these ulterior motives and focused on these traits. Like I said, like the Instagram or social media clout is something people admire and search for. Me personally, I would prefer to have a girl that has less than 2,000 followers, not verified, not known or seen, like not worried about any of that social media stuff. It's me personally. And as an athlete, you might run into people that are seeking out someone like yourself just because of how people view you. You might be this verified athlete on social media and they wanna, you know, join that, get on your bandwagon and get you because of that. They might not care about your personality, the things you're into, um, your future goals, you being a good person. It is looking at your traits. Oh, he's tall and handsome, he plays basketball, he might have some money, like, they're looking at traits. They're not actually looking at who you are. They just look at the traits. And I hate that, I run into that a lot. Like, people get so focused on traits versus who that person actually is. The funny little quirky things about you, your morals, like your personality, like those are the things that you want people to be looking at and seeking and valuing in you. Like that's what it's all about. It's not about these traits that we've created. It's about the real things that make people unique. But on the flip side of that, I don't know if it's a real term or not, but I like to call this superstar syndrome. A lot of athletes develop this, and they'll be the ones that are the shallow person in the situation. You become successful at a young age. People love you, they cheer you on, they give you stuff. You know, you have privilege. Just like you ever heard of pretty privilege, you have superstar privilege or athlete privilege. I, I just say superstar syndrome, I don't know. And you go through life getting handed things and making friends just based off of what you do and not who you are. Not the fact that you're good at having conversation, not the fact that you have funny things about your personality, not the fact that you're a good person. None of the stuff that you got going on internally, they only around you because of what you do. So you don't really have any skills that you develop, any social and personal skills that you develop. And then you are now not a good dating candidate because you're really not bringing anything to the table other than what you do. And a lot of guys and girls go through that and it's gonna get worse and worse with social media. People are getting this false sense of acceptance and arriving. Like, you haven't really done anything. You just do something that people like, but they don't really like you, they like what you do. You run into people that are very shallow, don't have anything to offer besides the fact that they are known, don't bring anything to the table. And it's tough on both sides, like running into athletes that are like that, and athletes running to other people that are like that, that's tough. And it's unfortunate, but that's the dating world we live in. Like, that's just how it is. I wanna say that athletes aren't special in the in the way that this is only things that apply to them. Like I said, like young people in general are all going through this. Um, the dating marketplace is really, really messed up and it's only getting worse. But I'm hopeful that things, you know, turn a corner. And at least if we're going to be living in a world with a terrible dating marketplace, uh, it just takes one person to make it all worthwhile. You know, your blessings are gonna come. Uh, don't be impatient. You want the right person, not just any person, not just a person today. You want the person that actually values you, bring something to the table, and you wanna be a person that can value them and you also bring something to the table. It's a two-way street. And I hope things are up for you, whoever's watching this video. I hope you subscribe and like the video because that does everything. Like this video, please. Hope you guys enjoy my perspective on this. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. If you're a trainer looking to take your business to the next level, Jumble's got you covered. Scheduling, streamlined bookings, and payments make it easier than ever for you to focus on the important things. The team at Jumble created a platform that connects its users to athletic facilities, training, and events. So if you're looking for a better way to run your business and engage your community, tap in. You can find us at jimble.us. That's G-Y-M-B-L-E dot U-S. Or on Instagram at Jimble app.